يسلموا على رسول الله ما بعد There's a couple more things to discuss in respect to the concept of backbiting. Uh, one is, what are some of the reasons why a person, an individual, does ghibah? If you identify the reasons, you can work on preventing it. If you recognize why I commit the act, then you can uh, target those reasons and try and avoid it. And the last discussion before we move on will be uh, what happens if we've backbited people? How do you make up for that? What's the shari'i ahkam and rulings in relation to this? So the first reason the ulama, they write as to why a person backbites another is when a person becomes angry with somebody else. It's very simple. Emotion, anger. And... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has permitted anger in certain instances. It's a, it's a natural emotion, anger. And so to become angry for the right reasons, it's at, at times it's actually a demand of the sharia. So anger in itself is not blameworthy as long as it's done for the right reason. For example, uh, to display anger for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If, some, if, if an injunction of the Sharia is being violated, then to become upset by that. The Prophet وسلم, if something was done in front of the Prophet وسلم, that violated the deen, then the Prophet would become, it would visibly be, you could visibly see the anger in the Prophet's face. And that is part of the Sharia, to become angry for the deen. However, just like there are positives to anger, there are negatives to anger. And not understanding how to control one's anger or lashing out every time one becomes angry and venting one's anger. So these are, bl these are blameworthy. They're not praiseworthy traits of anger. And so when a person becomes angry with somebody else, now this is crucial to understand this, a person may be at fault to make you angry, but that anger doesn't justify you to backbite the person, even though they're at fault. For him, that someone does something to you that has caused you anger, justifiable anger. But the Sharia doesn't allow you to use that anger in the wrong way. And one of the ways that's the anger is used is to then speak ill about that person behind their back so you're upset with that person fine but the sharia doesn't permit then to use that anger to speak about that person behind the person's back so number one anger and that's a big reason why many of us backbite other people because someone has wronged us we feel hurt by it there is anger inside our heart and thus, when we speak about the person negatively, it's built upon that anger. So the first. Number two, and this is also something that we're, it's a, a big reason why we backbite. It's because of the company that we keep. And because others are engaged in that type of conversation, and we don't want to upset the friends that we have, we feel that we have to participate with that same conversation. Many a times, the individual himself doesn't have that trait. They don't like to backbite. They don't want to. But they're in the company of someone who is a close friend, someone they even respect at times. Some people, you respect someone, you give them a position and a maqam in your, in your, in your own sight. Now that they're doing wrong, you feel that I'm not able to stop myself being in this discussion anymore. And remember, in terms of ghibah, one is to verbalize it yourself, one is to participate in the conversation, that's also ghibah. Just because someone else is saying it, if you go along with that conversation, and yeah, 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 what you're saying is, that's part of the ghibah. That's part of that. And so many of us fall into this trap of because of the people that we're with. They make, they're, they're the ones doing the sin, but we feel compelled. We feel compelled 
because of our closeness with them, our relationship with them. Sometimes it's family members, sometimes it's just someone that we're really close to, and it's hard for us to tell them that I don't want to. And it's, it's difficult. But believe you me, if you start developing that habit where someone starts that conversation, you say, it's okay, let's talk about something else. You do it once, twice, three times, the person will realize that this, this person doesn't like talking about these things. So there's no point. But if you let it go and you carry with the conversation, the person will think that he's fine with it. And so number two is the, the suhba that we keep, the people that we have a friendship with or a relationship with because they are engaging in it sometimes we fall into the trap uh, so what's the anger is pretty obvious what's the solution for this number one try and stop that conversation when it begins and if the person is adamant if the person is then you have to think of is that relationship good for me now at the end of the day each and every one of us has to think about our own akhirah and if the company of a particular person is de destro destroying my akhirah, then it doesn't make sense to carry on with that relationship. <coughs> if it means I have to distance myself from that relationship, then I have to. Because at the end, you have to think, if this is detrimental for my akhirah, then this friendship doesn't make sense. It's no good to me. It's of no benefit for me. So number two, the, the, because of who we're surrounded by, um, we become dragged into conversations about other people. Number three, when somebody's praise is mentioned be in, in our presence, because there is arrogance within us, there is takabbur within us, we can't accept the praise of somebody else. And thus, we have to say something to make that person seem lower than you. This is very evil. This is very evil. That there is such arrogance within ourselves that if someone else's praise takes place before us, some good is mentioned about somebody else, you can't digest it. And because there is arrogance within one's own self, you have to immediately say something negative about the other person to put that person down to make yourself look good. And there are all sorts of examples that you can give in relation to this. You know, that just simple sweeping statements. Someone's talking about someone, yeah, but the person's salah looks deficient, it's not that good, his kirat isn't that great. Only these statements, what's the purpose? What's the agenda behind it? The agenda is to make the other person be, less, be inferior to yourself. Even though you're not saying it to him, you're saying about him. But to the person you're saying it to, what's the, what's the objective? That the person that's listening says, ah, he's not as good as you. It's a very, very evil trait. You're putting another person down to raise one's own state in front of others. Number four, hasad and jealousy. Because one is jealous of someone else. And the jealousy is so burning inside that at every opportunity, wherever you can, talk about that person, bring that person down, take, say something about them, say because of that jealousy. And as we're building up these traits, they they're now they, they now combine multiple sins into one. You're not only doing riba, you're also committing the act of having jealousy and harboring hatred towards somebody else. And so they, they combine, the sins now combine and they become greater and greater and greater. So ghibah doesn't have one reason why we do it, there are multiple reasons. Some are innocent, like I say, some of us just find it difficult to come out of that friend, that circle of friends who constantly like to talk like this. And that, it's bad, but it's not the same evil of someone who just cannot see somebody else praise before them because they think they're so great. It's not as bad as someone who's constantly attacking another person's dignity and honor because they're jealous of them. There's a difference, there's a level there. And one is greater in terms of the magnitude of the sin in compared to the other. Also, they mention, the ulama, they mention that 
And this is this is this is again something that 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 a lot of us fall victim to. Because we want to the conversation that we have to make it lively and to make it something where uh, others listen to us. The objective is not even jealousy, it's not even hatred. Just so that we can make the conversation fun. We have to include somebody else's discussion. Just so that there is some uh, laughter that takes place inside this conversation. We have to mock somebody else. We have to talk evil about somebody else. So it's not even built upon jealousy. It's not even built upon hatred. It's just because you want to appease somebody else's ears. Or you think that that's going to appease their ears. So to make fun of someone just for the, for the sake of making fun. For the sake of jest. And you don't understand that that ghibah in jest is still ghibah in the law. Doesn't make it different. It is still backbiting somebody. So these are very simple five reasons why, and you can concentrate on them, you can think about them, that am I committing the sin of backbiting due to any one of these reasons? If I am, or is it a combination of them? Or is it all of them? Am I, am I so engrossed in riba that for all of these reasons, I commit the act of backbiting? Then you have to start concentrating on those reasons. Start controlling your anger. Understand the seriousness of jealousy. Remove that takabbur from your heart and arrogance where you can't see somebody else praise. <coughs> if it's the friendship, then look at how you can overcome that problem in that friendship. Of like many, many people, just they just have this knack when they get together with other people that they have to talk about other people. Then you have to think that, that, that acquaint, those acquaintances are not good for me anymore. And I have to do something about it. So concentrate on the reasons to rid yourself of the actual sin. If you understand why you're committing the act of riba, what are the reasons behind it? You can start to slowly work to eradicate that sin from your life. Allah give me the understanding, Allah give all of you the understanding, give us the tawfiq to avoid this detrimental sin. Like I mentioned, there's one more discussion left, and that's the discussion of what happens if you've committed this act of riba, which obviously we all have. How do you redeem yourself from that? What is done? And there are lots of different scenarios. What happens if the person that you've backbited has moved to another country and you've got no access to them? What happens if they've passed away? When, and if someone comes to redeem, redeem themselves from you because they've back, what is the shari'i position of you? Do you have to forgive them? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills, inshallah, then tomorrow we'll conclude that discussion of ghibah. Allah give us all the understanding. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Subhanallah, bihamdi, subhanakallah, bihamdi, wa nashadu wa la ilaha illa ant. Nasafaru wa la ilaha illa ant. Jazakum wa khair.